Welcome back to another Blender tutorial. In this video, we're going to talk about how I made these perfectly sharp and clean anime hair shadows. So you can see that if I click on this hair shadow and hide it, this is what it looks like without it. And if I enable it again, we have these really nice stylized hair shadows that work perfectly in 3D here. So I can even select our hair and start moving these and it'll follow along. So this works perfectly with animation and stylized models in Blender. So let's make this. And before I even get started here, a huge thank you to Late As Usual. Um, they're part of the Dylan Goo Goo Engine team. Um, and they are the one who explained how this works to me. All I did was break it down and try to recreate it myself. And huge shout out to my friend Kakaya for making this wonderful, wonderful stylized 3D model and rig here that you see here. So. Go check out her uh, Lucky 8 base if you want to use this, because you can actually buy this model base if you're interested in making your own characters with it. This is an older version of the base, but uh, yeah. So let's get started here. So first thing I'm going to note here is this is requires Goo Engine. Uh, and if you don't know what Goo Engine is, that's what the render engine we're using right now. Um, and it's basically a fork of Blender, which just means a different version of Blender that is optimized for this kind of stylized shading in particular. And this will not be a thing that you can do in quote unquote normal Blender. So I would highly recommend you go check out Goo Engine and download it because uh, if you're doing stylized anime stuff like this or in like anime illustration style work, you will highly benefit from using Goo Engine anyway in Blender. So. There you go. I'll link a video down below explaining what it is though, because that's not really the purpose of this video. So let's recreate this effect. So to do that, I'm going to click on this hair mesh that I already made and hide it because you're not going to be starting from there. Um, and to actually make this effect, we're going to just want to select our hair mesh just by clicking on it and then press shift plus D on our keyboard to duplicate it and then left click to confirm which does mean that your hair mesh needs to be separated from the rest of your model. So you can see here, if I go into edit mode, my hair mesh is totally separate from the rest of the model here. And that's very important. Make sure that your hair mesh is separate from the rest of the model. Otherwise you cannot make this effect properly. So now that that's separated from the rest of the model, I am actually going to hide our original hair mesh like so, and then make sure that our hair mesh we just duplicated is visible. So I just hit our original hair mesh and made our second one visible if it wasn't already. So with that being all taken care of, now we want to go to the material properties editor, duplicate our hair material by clicking this little button right here. And then we're gonna rename this material hair underscore shadow, like so. Now we want to go to the node editor and to go to the node editor, we wanna click right here, of course and switch on over to the shader editor. So now that we have the shader editor open, I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger. And in my case here, I have a bunch of nodes um, and we're just gonna delete all of these because we don't actually need these for what we're about to do. So now that our hair looks like a black blob like this, we want to recreate our hair shadow material that we just saw. So to do that, I already have it in my scene here. You're not gonna have this obviously, but just for reference, I wanna kind of break down and explain what this does and how it works. Um, so basically, these are grabbing the color data from our face texture here in order to make sure that this material only draws on top of the colors present in our face texture because we don't want this drawing on top of our, for example, the black of our eyes that would look really weird and awkward. Um, and it would basically be the same as if we just like put an emission to material on this, which we don't want. Um, so that's what these RGB nodes solve. Then we have this capsule slash line node um, and our screen space info node to kind of grab the scene color. And it eventually runs into a math node or excuse me, a mixed color node right here. And is after the capsule line node, we go into a less than node and go into the factor like so. I'm not gonna full, pretend I fully understand everything that's going on here. All I know is that, that this is how you get this effect. So obviously you're not gonna have any of this, so we're just gonna put this towards the bottom for reference for now. So what you will have is just this material output node. So with that being said, I'm going to now spawn in a RGB node by pressing shift plus A, search RGB. 
There's our RGB node, and I'm going to duplicate it by pressing Shift plus D so that we have two of them like we do down here. Then I'm going to spawn in our screen space info node again. This is Goo Engine exclusive. You're not going to have this in regular Blender. So I'll press Shift plus A, go to Goo Engine, and then do a screen space info node like so. Then if we look down here, we're going to see that I also have a capsule line and less than node. And if I press Shift plus A and go to Goo Engine, we're going to see our that the capsule slash line is not actually here because this is actually an SDF primitive node. So click on SDF primitive and switch this from sphere to capsule line. So now that's going to be what we have down here. And finally, this is actually a math node right here. So to spawn in a math node, you can press shift plus A, search math, then switch it, this math node from add to less than. So from add to less than, like so. Now we have our less than node. And this is just a mix RGB node right here. So if I type mix color, that's going to be what we want. And we're going to switch this from mix to darken. So now it's going to say darken at the top there, just like our math node now says less than at the top. So that's fantastic. And we're going to put our material output over here. And we're just going to use our nodes we already spawned in just as reference again. So you're just going to have these and what we're going to want to do is plug the value of our less than into the factor of our darken, like so. Then we're going to want to plug the distance of the capsule slash line into the value of this less than, like so. Like that. And make sure that our radius and capsule slash line is 0.03. The radius right here, 0.03, like so. Then we want to plug in both of our RGB nodes into point A and point B of our cap capsule slash line. So this is going to be point B. This is going to be point A. And we want the scene color of our screen space info node to be the vector and the A in our darken node. So we're going to put this into vector and our scene color from our screen space info node into point A, like so. And we want the factor of ours to be from our less than node, which it already is. So I don't know why I'm saying that. <laughs> so now that that's all taken care of, we will now plug in the results from our darken node. So this is what your nodes should look like right about now. I'll clean this up a little bit. It's a little more legible. Then I'm going to plug this result into the surface. And it's going to look like it did absolutely nothing, which is exactly what we would expect at this point of time. So don't worry. Um, because our problem here is actually not related to our node setup whatsoever. If we go with our second hair object that we duplicated selected, we want to make sure that we're in our material properties tab still and scroll down until we see this option right here called ray traced refraction. This used to be screen space refraction, but now it's called ray traced refraction. I don't, I don't know why they changed that, but there you go. If I enable this ray trace refraction, our node setup is now going to function as it should. Um, and if that didn't change the way you expected it to, don't worry, because you may not have a very important setting enabled in the render properties tab. So go to the render properties tab, then go to screen space reflections and make absolutely sure this is both enabled and that refraction is also enabled. And again, I'm using the Goo Engine render engine here because of course that's the whole point of using Goo Engine in the first place. So make sure that screen space reflections and refractions are on, otherwise this effect will not work. So I'm going to go back to our node editor here and I think I can safely just delete this because it's, you know, you're not gonna have that anyway. <laughs> and now if I go to the B, on our darken node, this little color section on our darken node, this will represent our hat, our hair shadow color. So now if I change this around, you're gonna see that our shadow color will change. And I'm gonna make this super red, like also light, maybe a little bit pinker than that. You can kind of just totally play around to taste at this point though, which is very fun. I'm gonna say that looks pretty good for now. And now I will bring back our original hair object as we should. So now that our original hair object is back, you're going to notice a few weird things. One, we don't actually have hair shadows because they have not moved at all. They're perfectly in line with the original hair mesh, which we want to fix. And two, there's these weird overdraw issues where the mesh is like on top of our original mesh, which looks really awkward. 
let's fix that. So I'm gonna hide our original hair object again, and I'm gonna make sure that our second duplicated hair is selected and isolate it by pressing this button, this forward slash button right next to shift on your keyboard, which will just isolate the hair object. Then I'm gonna go into edit mode by pressing tab, and I'm gonna press L to select linked vertices on basically all hair that is not directly in front of our character. Like you wanna delete a lot of hair when you do this. So just link select everything. I'm even gonna turn on transparency so I can select through objects. Just select a ton of hair because you really don't want any hair that is not going to directly cast a shadow on your character's face. So I can delete all of this like so. And this is also going to improve the performance of your scenes because you're not going to be having all this extra geometry to worry about. Then I'm going to press delete faces. That's looking pretty good, but I don't even need this. So I'm going to delete that as well. And that's good enough. So I'm going to go back to object mode by pressing tab and press the forge, forward slash again to get out of that view. And that's what we're looking like right now. So it's pretty good looking. Let's enable our hair once again. And of course, we're still not gonna see hair shadows because our hair is directly on top of our original hair. So to fix that, I'm gonna select our duplicated hair, press N, and then from this location dropdown, I'm gonna hold shift and kind of just scooch this over. And look at that, we have our hair shadows. Now, this is just totally to taste. There's no perfect way of doing this. But I'll do it kind of like this. And that's looking awesome. We now have our hair shadows. So if I select the bones on our hair here, you're gonna see that they still follow along perfectly and totally line up with our original hair, which is fantastic. And they're super sharp and crisp. I can zoom in all the way and not get any pixelization or aliasing at all, which is awesome. This is actually working pretty good by default because our skin tone on our character here is so light, but we actually want to select the colors on our face texture here to make sure that we're only casting shadows on the face here. So I'm going to go to this white and then I'm going to go to the eyedropper on our bottom RGB node and select the most pale part of our skin, which is probably like around here. Then I'm going to select the most red part of our face texture by selecting this, doing the eyedropper and I'll do about right here, like so. So now that's going to kind of minimize where this is drawing where it shouldn't. As you can see though, it's still drawing on this white section, which is not ideal. Um, it's not drawing on this black part, which is fantastic uh, because that's key to this effect looking good. Like if I just had, uh, don't, don't follow along with this, but if I just had an emission here, for example, and I like color picked this color and then used this instead, it looks like ass. It looks really, really bad um, because it's drawing on top of that black value, which looks really awful. So. Goo Engine is doing a number for us, and it's also drawing on top of the hair there, which also looks terrible. Um, so Goo Engine is doing a lot for us here, and you can honestly just kind of animate around this so that it's much less of an issue. Um, but that is how this effect works. That's the strengths and weaknesses of this effect. I think it looks absolutely fantastic, and I hope you learned something. I hope this was useful, and thank you so much for watching.